How you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? Oh, fine. Thank you. Well, it's a thrill for me to be speaking with you. I've uh, heartily enjoyed your voice and your music for the past 12 years. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, take me back a little bit. Uh, I know that you were born in Chicago. Um, tell me about your childhood growing up there. Well, I'm um, the youngest of three girls. Uh huh. I have three sisters. Uh, um, and um, I have one younger brother. I had one older brother, but he passed away. He had cerebral palsy. My childhood was very interesting. We had a lot of music <laughs> in our house. Oh, yeah? My mother was uh, the organ player for the church. Oh, okay. It's a nice job. And my grandmother used to sing in the choir, so it okay. was always a lot of music in the house. And my mother... She would have the piano and the organ rocking every day. <laughs> so that's just the way it was in our house. Yeah. My mother was a singer as well. As a matter of fact, when I sing, I can hear her voice. Oh, really? And what, yes. What was her name? Her name was Doris. Doris, okay. Mm -hmm. Doris Thomas. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, how did you feel about school growing up? School? Hated it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask, did you have any favorite subjects, but maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> but I went, you know, didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. That's good that you went. That probably helped a little yeah. bit down the line. <laughs> yeah, it helped. But, you know, it was like my interest was music and they didn't have any. So Yeah, I guess. My, it... my opinion was, why am I here? <laughs> right. I did read that you, after you finished school, you moved to New York for a little while. Oh, I went to uh, an acting school. Okay. Yeah. And that was in New in, York? In uh, New York. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I uh, did very well there. I did so well that uh, they wanted to travel and take me on this traveling. Um, it was a, a play that they were traveling, but I, I just couldn't go at the time. I just wasn't ready to go. Weren't you even on the Wiz cast album? I used to do the backup when when different plays came through Broadway. Uh huh. They had different people doing. When you had certain investors come and invest in your play, uh -huh. they would give like a preview of the play. Okay. And I was in that crew of people that would do the music for The Wiz or whatever play it was. Okay. There were quite a few plays. Okay. And that, that's where that came from. Okay. So mm -hmm. they maybe used some of those performances from that group you were in for the actual final product right. of the soundtrack. Right. Okay. I guess on a trip back to Chicago where um, you had your chance meeting with Ian Levine, if I understand correctly. Well, the, the way I met Ian Levine was I was in this band mm -hmm. called the Mood Mixers. Oh, okay. I like that name. And <laughs> yeah. And there was a guy in the band. His name was Pumpkin. Okay. I don't know his real name till today. <laughs> Okay. I just know Pumpkin was really the more, one was instrumental in me, meeting Ian Levine. And okay. Nobody had ever known that. Huh, yeah. Um, I hadn't heard that. He told me that he was going to trial for a recording contract. Okay. And he asked me to go along for the ride, so I did. Oh. And after he got there, and Ian Levine, um, he did an interview with Ian. I was sitting in the room with him. Uh -huh. And Ian liked his voice, but he had somewhat of a skin condition. Oh. That Ian didn't think that the public would, you know, take to it be very well. With. Yeah, uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, which I thought he was wrong, but anyway. Yeah, and that's a shame. <laughs> you know, it works so, like that. You know, because you got quite a few people in the business that has that, and that's not a big deal. That's true. Yeah, that's unusual. Anyway, um, he didn't take him. So Pumpkin came to me and asked me. He says, "Why don't you try out?" Okay. So anyway, yeah. um, uh, 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 so Danny that, Leak. Uh huh. Danny Leak asked Ian because we were at Danny Leak's house, and you know Danny Leak is the producer of Poison. Oh, is he the and, one? Uh, I, you know, I've seen his name on all the Ian Levine Disco Era records. I didn't realize right, he was right, the guy that did right. Poison too. He's a huge producer now. Okay. okay. And Danny Leak is the one that, that told Ian, 
sit down and listen to her because he didn't want to listen to me. Oh, okay. He said, sit down and listen to her. You never know. So he, I sung a song called uh, uh, Neither One of Us by Gladys Knight and the Pips. Right, okay, good choice. And he jumped up off the couch and he <laughs> says, oh, you're wonderful. I've never heard such an angelic voice. And oh, my God, would you like to be in the music industry and all this stuff. And so that's how it happened. <laughs> oh, okay. So it was in a pretty quick time frame. Yeah, that that it happened. happened real fast. And next thing I knew, I was in London. And you were doing, you did the recording there for those first weak singles, spot. Weak Spot and Doomsday and all that? Mm-hmm. So, had you ever been overseas at that point when, when you went no, over there? No, no, no. What was I'd it like? never li- even, what was it like for yeah, me? Yeah, what was it like for you? It, probably a culture shock, uh-huh. <laughs> if anything. But speaking of high energy, I mean, since we got to that, and I mean, that has been a defining song for you, um... I, how does it feel to be associated with such such an impactful song for dance music? I mean, it's made its mark and continues to. I mean, it's been a favorite of gay fans worldwide and audiences in general um, when it comes to good music to dance to. So, I mean, what are your thoughts about the song and, and the, I guess, legacy it's helped t- to create for you? Well, I'll say this. Mm-hmm. That that song... Um, really helped my career mm-hmm. just soar, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, monetarily, as far as the song was concerned, wasn't so happy. Yeah. But mm-hmm. uh, the fans and the things that the song really actually did for me as an entertainer, it, it, it kept me alive. Okay, yeah. Okay, and I appreciate each and every one of my fans. I really, really do. Because without those fans, I couldn't have made it. I really couldn't have made it at all. Yeah. So the was... fans are the one that kept me alive and kept me going. Uh, high Energy, most of the songs that I had were leftover songs that nobody wanted to do. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Like... And they were all the hits. Like Masquerade or... Um... Well, no, not, not exactly Masquerade. Masquerade was designed especially for me. Okay. But uh, High Energy uh-huh. and uh, a Weak Spot, they were leftover songs. Oh, they, like they were going to use for someone else or something and it didn't... No, just... what it was, they had Barbara Pennington, they mm-hmm. had... Uh, um, L.J. Like Johnson? L.J. Johnson and a couple more people that they had already had and they all picked the songs that they wanted. Right. And Weak Spot was the song that was left over. That's when I first came in. Oh, okay. Okay, and Weak Spot was the only song that did anything. Yeah, that was the one that and, became big. Yeah. You know, right. And so that was the biggest song, which nobody thought it would be because nobody wanted it, because it was a very simple song. Mm-hmm. But it was cute, and people loved it, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's got a good rhythm, and, um, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And High Energy was one of those songs that uh, that was offered to a couple of singers and nobody wanted it. Interesting. I but the last understand. three songs we've done together, Ian and I, uh, we wrote the lyrics together. Okay, was that, so they um, did. I Can't Give You the World, wasn't that one of the songs? Right, yeah, right. I saw that on YouTube. That was a really nice song, yeah. 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 And uh, we wrote a song called a Million to One. Okay. And we wrote another song called Pounding the Pavement. Yeah, I saw that title. That sounds interesting, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a very good song. I think that's the strongest. I think that is his follow-up to High Energy. Okay, yeah. It has that kind of title that grabs you, so that's good. Um, oh, it's heavy. It's it's one of it's probably the one of the best songs he's ever written in a long time. Wow. But, I mean, we rewrote that song together, so we collaborated. I wouldn't come back with him unless he said, let's do collaboration, because, you know, you grow up in the industry and you find out, okay, all the money's in the writing. You're not going to do that to me this time. So. You learn the hard way. Yes, my dear. Stick to the plan. Mm-hmm. Well, Soren and I wanted to write something together. Well, I told him the only way I would do any business with him that I had to be in on the writing. Okay. Okay, so we came up with this song. He he, he called it Stick to Your Guns. Okay. <laughs> I said, I had a lot of guns going around lately. Right. People are walking That's... in places shooting folks. I said, you don't want to do that. That's true. Why don't we just say Stick to the Plan? Okay. All right. Yeah, that, and that's And that's how better. the title came up. Yeah. yeah. And so we started writing and, you know, corresponding back and forth over the internet before I ever met him. Okay. So the song was written, the music was written by um, um, Clive Scott. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Clive Scott wrote all the music for uh, um, 
Stick to the plan and miss the target. No, Soren's uh, whole album. Oh, the plan. That album. is Clive Scott. Okay. 